Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground is brought to you by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund. Well, I'm Dwayne Shoup and I do furniture and custom woodworking. For a lot of my furniture, I like to get the bark peeled off because I give people different looks. Bark on, bark off. Uh, so this would be the basic way that I, I get the bark off. I've been doing um, rustic custom woodwork for a little over 20 years. My dad was a carpenter. My grandfather was a carpenter. I always liked being in the woods and had a, just a, a love of wood. And I moved from the Chicago area into to northern Minnesota. And I'm living in the woods. And I had to do something to pay the bills. So I started playing around with um, making some rustic furniture. Today, we're going to make uh, a rustic end table. Uh, it's going to be red oak and maple, maple legs with the bark on. These two pieces of wood are going to be our top. First, I'll cut them to length. I like making this furniture because probably being my own boss and just being able to do my own thing and have the creative freedom to, you know, cruise around in the woods and gather some raw material and actually bring it to my shop and, and make something out of something that basically has no value. I'm probably right into the green thing before anybody else ever was because a lot of my product is made out of raw material that just goes to waste in this part of the country. How long have I been doing this? Um, well, since about 1987, I think is when I first really got started doing furniture, but I did some, um, I actually did some Bentwood pieces back in the mid 70s. I had a Mother Earth News that had a, had a little article in there on how to make a Bentwood willow chair. And I managed to follow those directions and put one together that looked pretty good. So that's kind of was my first experience making furniture. Um, and I made a few pieces and I didn't really go anywhere with it until I moved to Minnesota some years later. I got a nice little curve that I'll have that curve going out a little bit. Give our table a little character. This is just a wood-rich country, and it, um, I, I, I expect, I think that the North Woods atmosphere living here kind of was an inspiration to me, too. Um, with all this trees and lumber around here, it's like an inexhaustible supply of raw material. That and the fact there's a lot of stuff around here that's just waste as far as the logging industry around here. You know, they run over a lot of stuff that I could use and make furniture out of, so I've incorporated a lot of that kind of stuff into my product. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a little bevel on this sharp edge of my pieces. And the way I'm gonna do that is just with a, a Makita grinder with a coarse disc on it. I think I um, continuously try to challenge myself to make new pieces, um, new high-end pieces out of uh, very, you know, like walnut and cherry, hard maple. Um, I'm always challenging myself to do, to do better, to do, to do some awesome stuff. Well, some of the favorite things I'm doing now is um, some of the heavier slab work where I'm using um, wide pieces of slabs that come out of pretty good sized trees that have the natural edge on them. Um, some interesting figure out of the crotch pieces and just different colors and green patterns and there's a lot of things going on in a log or a piece of wood that sometimes you got to look for um, and I'm able to incorporate that into a piece of furniture. That's part of the fun of actually sawing wood, which I do too, because I take it right from the forest. I have complete control over the whole process. I'm getting a log out of the woods and I'm sawing it up. And that's a really fun experience too because you're always looking for what treasure is buried or hidden inside that log. And you find some really neat stuff. Then the wheels get turning and you start thinking about, well, how am I gonna apply this to a piece of furniture? What's it gonna be? It doesn't always just jump out there and tell me what it's gonna be right away, but Sometimes I might look at a piece that's standing up against the wall in the shop for six months and all of a sudden it just somehow kind of talks to me and I know what I want to do with it then. 
Well, I sell out of my studio online. I do a few sh art and craft shows. Um, and I get a lot of business from satisfied customers that have bought a piece from me before. Um, their friends saw it. And where'd you get that? And they send it to me. And, you know, I like to think just about 100% of my customers have been happy for what I've made for them. It's always a fun experience. Not only just for me, but for the customer also. And I don't think that a lot of people actually think about having something custom made for themselves or their own space. Okay, now our tabletop is fastened to the table. The Japanese style saw that you cut on the pull stroke. And those types of saws, because you're not compressing the blade by pushing forward, you're actually pulling the blade back to you, they can make a lot thinner blade and you can make a, a nicer, finer cut for doing fine work. And there's our table. Nice little rustic table. I do do commission pieces. Matter of fact, uh, that's one of the things I enjoy most is working with people um, to create something for them that's made for them for specifically for their space. Um, I like to invite people to come out and actually I have a, a large quantity of raw material here. You can come out and pick out your own piece of wood that you want to have something made out of. And in, in the end, the end product that you get for your, yourself is it's, it's special for you. I made it for you. It's, you know, but I'm just talking about my passion in life. It's just kind of, you know, it's what I live every day and what I've created my own you know, place here and my own business and my own product and I've kind of created my own little world here. It's kind of my version of the simple life, living in the country, doing your own thing, being your own boss. If you enjoyed this segment of Lakeland Public Television's Common Ground, consider making a contribution at lptv.org. If you have segment ideas pertaining to North Central Minnesota, Contact us at legacy at lptv.org. Common Ground is funded by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund by the vote of the people on November 4th, 2008.